All right, welcome to the uh, webinar from Stock Scores, the Stock Scores Strategy Overview. I'm Stock Scores founder Tyler Ballhorn, and I am going to be your host for this evening. Before we get started, I'd like to just uh, highlight some of the upcoming webinars that we have uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, November 8th, how to become a successful day trader. November 9th, how to become a successful investor. Those two will focus more on the process that I use to identify trades. Tonight we're gonna to actually talk about the different strategies and the amount of time it takes to do them and that sort of thing. Um, November 15th, what are the economics of stock trading? I'm always asked, you know, how much money can you make? How much money do you need to make it? That sort of thing. So we're gonna go through the economics of both investing your longer term portfolio and also um, short term trading, day trading, swing trading, and that sort of thing. And just talk about the numbers. All right, so tonight's presentation is on my strategies of stock scores. It's to provide you an overview of the different stock scores, investor, and active trader strategies. Now, I'm making a big uh, update, I guess, to the stock scores website next week. And in that, we will have some modified strategies, some new strategies, and then, of course, some of the current strategies. I'm actually going to take off a couple as well, some that I'm not using much anymore, although in some cases I'm just replacing them with a modified version of those. Um, any trades that I highlight tonight were made by me in a public domain. So if I say, you know, here's an example of a simple swing strategy, those are things that I either highlighted in my Active Trader Live service, in the Trade Scores Alerts, which is a um, uh, subscription service that People uh, can get my trading ideas via email or text message if they're one of my students. And then the uh, weekly newsletter that is available for free where I also share with you some of my stock picks. So um, I'm going to give a number of examples and, and that's where they come from. Um, in many cases I traded them myself. Sometimes I don't because I uh, prefer to be more of a short term trader. And some of these things I talk about tonight will be longer term. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So let's just go through a few examples to give you a sense of what the different trading styles are. So when I talk about position trades, those are uh, trades where we take our entry signal off of the daily or weekly chart. And uh, they're typically held for weeks or months. Um, sometimes, I would say on, in general, two months, but they can be longer, they could be th two years. Um, although that happens rarely. And sometimes we enter a position trade that we end up getting stopped out of in four days. Um, even though we had a long-term expectation for it, it may not work out to be that way. So this is an example of a position trade. This was um, in one of my newsletters, I don't recall which one, uh, CPRX. And the entry day was on uh, March 16th, and it was right there. And it ended up returning an 89% gain by July 18th. So the sell was in there somewhere. And uh, basically looking at, I think, three months of hold period for a 90% gain. So that would be a, a really nice position trade. Swing trades, uh, we often trade them off of the daily chart, sometimes off of the uh, 13 or 30 minute chart. And we'll talk about the different variables or, or variations uh, this evening in this webinar. Uh, this particular one was a swing trade entered on uh, September 29th, so right there. And it uh, rallied for uh, almost a month, although it doesn't seem like it, but it made a quick pop here, October 23rd. I actually think I have this exit date wrong because the exit was right in there. Um, but that was 148% gain. So from a dollar forty to, uh, maybe I did hold a hold of longer. I could have gotten out earlier it, it would have been better to get out earlier, wouldn't it? Um, it went from where I featured it in the dollar thirty range to almost three eighty. I think I was snoozing a little on the exit because it was one hundred forty eight percent gain, but it did much better than that overall. Um, and finally, let's talk about uh, a day trade. This is a day trade chart of a stock that I day traded. Um, on October 24th, it uh, had the entry right there. 
And this is one of those rare occasions where it made a quite a big move in just uh, you know a number of hours, uh, moving up 37 percent uh, before the end of the day. And that was the end of the day price there, but it actually moved up even more than that. If uh, you really want to get picky about it, it went from let's say 89 cents to a dollar 50 within the day. Um, one of the things I want to highlight on this chart because we're going to use this concept. Um, later tonight, and that is the concept of risk reward lines. See those horizontal lines that I've drawn here? I actually have software that does that for me. And those lines are a reflection of the risk versus the reward of the trade. So in this case, the entry signal was at 87 cents, and our support price, which we use for our stops in defining our stops, was at um, 80 cents. And so the risk of that trade was seven cents, okay? Every multiple of seven cents is a new line. And so that's what we call risk reward lines. And so at $1.08, it was making three times the risk. It was up to $1.08 from 87 cents. That is a 21 cent move. And so if you bought one share, instead of uh, you know just one share, you were up 21 cents. If you bought 1,000 shares, you were up $210. If you bought 10,000 shares, you were up $2,100. So that's how risk reward works. If this trade didn't work and we got stopped out at R1, uh, then that was a loss of seven cents per share. We don't always use our stops at R1. We might use our stops at R2, which is what I tend to do actually. So the downside on this one was 14 cents. And so I'm going to show you something a little later called equity curves. And it's important to understand what I'm explaining to you now because I'm going to show you the reward for risk of different strategies over an extended period of time. And uh, we'll come back to this topic a little later, just so you understand at this point what I mean when I say reward for risk. So in this particular trade, it maxed out at a reward for risk of nine, which means nine times seven cents per share. So if you risked $1,000 on this trade, that means this trade made $9,000. Doesn't mean you bought $1,000 worth of stock. It means that was your risk. That was the difference between the entry price, the stop loss price, and $1,000. $1,000 divided by seven cents, which would be, you know, what is that? 12 and a half thousand shares, something like that. I don't know. I'm just quickly doing that in my head. Okay, so we'll, we'll go back into that in a little more detail in a moment. What I want to do now is uh, let's start getting into the strategies. So I've been trading for 27 years. And uh, over that time, I've developed a number of strategies. I'm always working on new ones, trying to come up with new ideas for different strategies. Um, they're all based on the same concept. And if you've watched others of my webinars in the past, you will know that I really focus on abnormal activity. So most of these strategies are somehow focused on abnormal activity. And in the case of this particular strategy, we're looking for abnormal activity on a daily chart. So this is a position trading strategy. We're going to use the stock scores market scan tool to identify the opportunities. I'll show you that in a moment. It takes about 15 minutes to apply this strategy. And um, you do that once a day. You don't have to do it every day, but that's typically how we do it. It um, is typically done in the last hour of trading or at the close. I'm just going to pause for a moment. Um, so we do that in the last hour of trading or after the close. And the concept is, as you see it there, we seeking stocks with abnormal activity breaks from predictive daily chart patterns with the upside potential of at least double the risk. And I want to quickly explain what I mean by that. So going back to that concept of risk reward, let's say we're buying a stock at $10 and we're going to plan to take a loss at $9. That means our risk is $1 a share. What we need is an upside potential to at least $12. That's two times the risk. So the risk, which we call R is uh, one and the reward is potentially two, $10 to $12 is $2 of reward. All right, so when I talk about at least double the risk potential, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, to do this particular strategy, we will typically use the stock scores indicators in the market scanning process. This is how uh, a chart looks. This is an example of a stock that met the criteria 
of the stock scores simple strategy. It did so on that day right there on May 4th. And it's one that was featured in my trade scores alerts um, product. And uh, it made a 54% gain from May 4th from here to when I exited it, it was just a few days ago, I think right about there, that was a 54% gain. Now, what I want to show you is the process that I would use to find this. I'm only going to do this fairly quickly because in some of the webinars in November, I'll go into a little more detail. But let's quickly do that. Go into the stock scores website. Go to the market scan tool, call up the stock scores simple strategy. We have one for Canada and one for the US. So I'm going to, uh, we'll do Canada, why not? And run the market scan. And in just a moment, it found 20 stocks that meet the criteria of that strategy. And you'll notice that they all have green looking stock scores. We want stocks that have a signal stock score of at least 80 and a sentiment stock score of at least 60. So you see those two indicators there. But that doesn't mean that we would want to buy all of these stocks. In fact, most of them we won't wanna buy because most of them will already be well into their upward trend. What we need to do now is evaluate the charts of these stocks, and we do that by just looking at them. Um, and so here's an example. This is actually a stock that I highlighted yesterday during my, um, I have a live trading webinar that I do every day for people who want to trade actively. And so this is a stock that I highlighted uh, yesterday at 74 cents. It was breaking from a good pattern. And today it made a pretty big jump again, but I wouldn't consider it a buy today. It was a buy yesterday. So we're one day late uh, looking at this market scan now. So the process then is you just go through the, the charts looking for good patterns. I'm just actually gonna go back a couple um, this one right here, Cathedral Energy. I'm pretty sure if you go into my free weekly newsletters, you'll see that this stock was featured um, sometime in September. I don't recall exactly when, but uh, because at that time, back in this area here, that's when it first made its break from a predictive chart pattern. This is a pattern called a pennant, and it's continued uh, to move higher since, and it had a pretty strong day today. I don't love it to buy today if you own this stock, um, if you bought it let's say you saw my newsletter at that time and you bought it then, uh, great, no reason to sell it, but I wouldn't buy it here. All right, so we'll just cycle through this and I'll stop at anything where I think we have a good um, entry point. Uh, this one looks pretty good, ECN Capital Corp. One of the things I do when I see a chart that I like is I go from the eight month or six month chart and I view the longer term charts. So I wanna take a look at the three year weekly and I see that this stock is breaking to new highs. It's got good stock scores. Go back to the six month daily here. Uh, I see good volume. It's got a lot of the things that I look for with that particular strategy. The stock scores are in the right place. It's got a pretty good pattern. I would rate this a seven, maybe even eight out of 10. So t.ecn looks pretty good. So what we're doing now is the process that I tell you takes 15 minutes a day. If you get practiced at it, you can probably do this process in five minutes a day. Um, when you first start out, it takes longer because you're having to spend more time looking at the charts. But eventually you get to the point where you can just see exactly what you're supposed to identify in these patterns and you'll know it when you see it. So I can move through these charts quite quickly because I've done this a long time and I'm trying to do it quickly just so we don't spend a lot of time on it. So the one that I liked for today was ECN and uh, you know that would be a stock where I then do my risk ana analysis, identify my position size and possibly enter those uh, that, that trade tomorrow. All right, so that's the process for the um, simple swing strategy. Moving right along, simple weekly. So this is very similar to the simple uh, stock scores simple strategy. Sorry, I just said simple swing, but I meant the stock scores simple strategy. The simple weekly is a position trading strategy. It utilizes the stock scores market scan, but instead of doing it daily, it's one that you do once a week. And I recommend you do it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, more at the end of the week. You can do it during the week. Um, just the chart won't have built the whole candle for the week. That's what we call those colored bars on the chart. Um, so you can do it anytime, but preferred time would be sometime Friday or on the weekend. The concept, very similar to the stock score simple. It seeks abnormal price breaks from predictive, in this case, weekly chart patterns 
for the stock score simple, we look at daily chart patterns. And then again, we want the upside potential of at least double the risk. And it utilizes, sorry, I spelled utilizes wrong there, the stock scores indicators. So looking at uh, this example, if you go back to my uh, weekly newsletter that you can get for free from stockscores.com, if you haven't signed up for that, go to the stock scores website and sign up for it there. And this is a stock that I featured in November right here because it was breaking from a predictive chart pattern that's called a ascending triangle pattern. And it had a breakout from that using the stock scores market scan. I could find this and that's how I found this stock. And that was at just a little above $30. Now we're getting close to 38. So, you know, for a conservative large cap stock, this is a nice, um, almost a one year hold. 30 to 38, that's what, 22, 23% gain. Better than most people earn in a, in a mutual fund or an RSP or something like that. So these are the kind of stocks that you put in that longer term portfolio, your retirement portfolio, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, in this particular case, it didn't do anything for three months. That's sometimes how it is. But it also didn't violate my support zone. So it never gave an exit signal. And now it's starting to move and it's in a nice upward trend and uh, remains a good hold. All right, moving along, the investor strategy, simple ETF. So this is one of the new ones that I will have coming in November. Position trading strategy, very similar to the stock score simple, but in this case, we're focused in on uh, exchange traded funds. So we have built lists of uh, exchange traded funds for Canada and the US, and you have to do a few modifications to the filtering mechanism for the market scan because we don't rely so much on strong volume when we do this particular strategy. Um, and the reason why is ETFs are a, a basket of stocks typically, and therefore the effect of abnormality gets watered down within the ETF. So we're more interested in the price pattern. So as an example, this is one that I featured again in my trade scores alerts product. Uh, this is the biotech sector in the US XBI. And it was picked right then on another break from an ascending triangle. Um, and it just got stopped out, I think yesterday, uh, our exit was, or maybe this morning, I think it was this morning, uh, we broke support. Uh, you can see support here and we use some other means for the exit signal. But um, in that case, it's a, call it a three month hold, a 10% gain in three months. Again, not the kind of you know, rocket ships that we sometimes see with shorter term trades, but this is a conservative, relatively low risk type investment vehicle that earned 10% in, you know, just in a few months. And so, uh, you know, the kind of things that you put in your longer term portfolio, you get 10 of those a year, you've had a good year. So that's how that particular strategy works. Moving along, abnormal breaks. This is probably my favorite investor strategy right now. Um, position trading strategy, utilizing the market scan tool. Uh, again, takes about 15 minutes a day. We typically do this maybe at the end of the day if you can. You don't have to, you can do it after the close. But if you can do this strategy in the last, say, half an hour of the day, you can identify opportunities, get into them before the open the next day. And the reason that that's helpful is sometimes these stocks will gap up and move very quickly the next day and you can get left behind if you're not in them already. Now, other times they pull back the next day. So that's why I say it's not critical that you do it before the close. You can do it in the evenings. Um, but I tend to do them in the final half an hour of the day. The concept, relatively simple, it seeks abnormal price break, breaks through resistance from low volatility. So RDNT, a stock featured in my trade scores alerts, was picked right then on that day. You can see the volume was abnormal, the price action was abnormal. These are some of the concepts we'll talk about in the webinar uh, coming up in November. Again, I'm going to give you just a quick overview tonight. But on August 8th, that was the pick date. Uh, it was sold August 9th, or October 9th, sorry. So I think it was right about there uh, when it penetrated our support, which is part of an, an exit strategy that I can teach you. Very methodical, very logic-based, there's no human judgment because we humans have a hard time with the exit. And so I created a set of rules for when to buy, when to sell. In this particular case, this was the buy, this was the sell, 
and it amounted to a 41% gain in, what is that, two months, two and a half months? No, about two months. So a, a real nice gain there. Uh, one more investor strategy. This particular strategy is one that, that tends to generate a lot of um, trades when you're coming out of a downtrend in the market. So, you know, 2009, 2010, 2011, it was a very useful strategy. Because the market's been trending higher for some time, it's not one that I'm using a lot today. I couldn't even come up with an example because I haven't used it lately. But it is one that I will use a lot when the market is uh, coming out of a, of a corrective phase. It's a position trading strategy, one that we utilize the Stock Scores Market Scan tool for. It takes, again, about 15 minutes a day. You can get that down to five once you get good at it. Um, you do that particular work at the end of the trading day or after the close. It seeks stocks breaking through resistance after a break of a downward trend line and a formation of a rising bottom. So if you can imagine a pattern where the stock is moving in a downward trend and it breaks the downward trend line, that's step one. It builds a rising bottom, that's step two. And then it breaks from a rising bottom, that's step three. And that is the bottom fishing setup. A um, little more to it than that. I'm giving you the Coles notes tonight, but that is the basic idea. Next strategy, and I don't have an example of that because I haven't done one lately. Uh, next example or, or strategy is a new strategy that will be on the website in November. It's not currently there. A position trading strategy, something I'm calling the stock scores breaker. I might come up with a better name. That's the name I came up with this afternoon when I was building this presentation. Uh, utilizes the market scan tool. Same amount of time as typical. Timing of research, ideally last hour. You can do it after the close. But these stocks tend to move more quickly. And so... It does have a benefit to catching them in that last hour. It's, the concept is pretty straightforward. We're seeking stocks breaking downward trend lines on the daily or uh, actually and weekly charts. We look at both the daily and weekly charts with abnormal price and abnormal volume. So this is one uh, listed on the Canadian market that I featured in my trade scores alerts on October 2nd, first trading day of October. You can see the abnormal price action and abnormal volume. Uh, we don't worry too much about the stock scores with this strategy. You can see that the stock scores weren't quite at the 60, 80 level that I often talk about. Um, and this is, a, this is an open trade. Sorry, my dog is barking in the background. Um, currently up 12% in about a month, a little less than a month, and uh, remains a good hold. I think it'll head higher in the near term. So that's this new strategy that, again, for those of you that have access to the Education Center on stock scores, you won't see that now, but it is something that's coming. And finally, I think that's finally for the investor strategies, the stock scores ETF breaker. So we take that same concept, we apply it to the exchange traded funds. This is something you can use to be a bit more of a short term trader of ETFs. I know that ETFs are super popular, so I'm coming up with some new strategies for ETF uh, traders. And this one, very similar to the stock scores breaker, the difference is that we don't have that same emphasis on abnormal volume, but it's um, you know a great way to move in and out of some of these lower risk exchange traded funds and exchange traded notes. All right, now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the active trader strategies that we have or will have on stock scores. The first one is the intraday pullbacks. I do this every day. Um, if you are an invest or pardon me, an active trader student of stock scores, you have access to subscribe to the active live service where I have a computer generating the entry signals for this particular strategy throughout the day. It is a day trading strategy. Um, if you're going to do the work yourself where you're picking the trade entry signals, then you need to have TradeStation. If you want me to do that work for you, then you subscribe to active live, which is what um, I was speaking about earlier and with active live I'm running TradeStation and I identify with my computers the entry points um, throughout the day uh, time required is market hours most of the entry signals come in the first two or three hours of the trading day um, and probably the better signals come in the first two hours of the trading day and then we do most of our exits at the end of the day in the last five minutes of the trading day. So this is one where you don't necessarily have to sit in front of your screen all day. Um, you can use risk uh, stop losses to manage your risk and, um, and then just be able to get back to your screen at the end of the day to exit your positions. Um, 
You do all that research work during the market. You don't have to do work before the market or after the market. Uh, you should do some work in terms of compiling your trading statistics after the market closes, but um, you don't have to do any research outside of market hours. It is a uh, fairly active strategy, so I, you have to be able to be a little better on your computer, uh, be able to think a little quicker. It, intellectually, it was it is no more challenging than any other strategy. All of these strategies, the rules, I could write on a napkin. They're not complicated. Um, the process to build the rules and, and and create the strategy is is complicated. It takes me, in some cases, years to build these strategies. I collect a ton of data before I um, create a new strategy. So in this particular one, I'll show you in a moment a spreadsheet where I track every um, valid entry signal for this strategy each and every day. And I do that after the market closes every day so that I can really uh, not only gauge the statistics for the strategy, but also um, refine the rules to find out what works best over time. Now, the concept for it is we seek something called a message candle, break from a, a good pattern on the stocks that are on our watch list. Now, how stocks get on our watch list is something that I only teach in the uh, course material. And what is a qualified pattern? Again, that's another thing that is taught but I'll give you an example. This is one that I traded this week, October 25th. And it, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's some little white dots in some of these charts. Hopefully you can see that. And those white dots are my own indicator. I have programmed for TradeStation. It's something called a um, message candle. And it is basic, basically a tall candle, but we use statistics and math to define what makes a message candle. So in this particular case, uh, GRUB on the 25th at uh, just about 10.30 there, gave the entry signal. It had a good pattern break. You can see there's a line drawn on there. All that's done by the computer. Everything that you see on this screen is actually done by my computers. There's no human judgment in this. It's an algorithm and it works very well. In this particular case, uh, the entry signal was at about 10.30 and uh, that's market time, Eastern time. And you just hold that until the end of the day. And this returned a 3.2 RR. So remember we talked earlier about risk reward. So here's an example of where that comes into play. So what that means, 3.2 RR, is that if you risked $100, you made 320. If you risked $1,000, in other words, if, you, if this trade didn't work out, you would lose $1,000 plus maybe some slippage. So if you risk $1,000, your profit on this trade was $3,200. Now I wanna stress, when I say risk $1,000, that's not how much of that stock you buy, that is how much you risk. That is the, based on the difference between the entry price and the stop loss um, R1. Okay, we actually, with this particular strategy, I will often risk two times that amount. So if I'm building a position size based on $1,000 of risk, I could actually lose $2,000. Um, but the probability of that happening is lower than the probability of it being profitable. And I just do these kind of things over and over again. Um, in a day like today, there was probably 10, 10 or 15 of these entry signals on this particular strategy. And sometimes they make a 3.2, sometimes they make a minus one, sometimes they make a two. Every once in a while, we'll have a big winner that makes 10 plus. And that's really where your big profits come from. So here is one of those spreadsheets that I was talking about where I track a lot of statistics. <clears throat> and you can see this was the list from October 23rd. And I just captured a little piece of the spreadsheet. But I've got all these statistics that I collect. And this probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you guys. But just to give you a sense of the kind of data collection that I use to define these strategies. Now, this particular strategy, since uh, the start of August, has made an RR with slippage. So I'm factoring in commissions and the potential for a little bit of imperfection in your, in your entries and exits. So it has had 439 uh, entry signals and exits since um, start of August. And that has led to a $163,000 profit if your risk is $1,000 per trade. 
So that's 163 times risk. So if your risk was $100 per trade, then you'd have a $16,300 profit. Assuming you do exactly every trade, you're perfect. Nobody's perfect. So when you see this number, that's what a computer could do. That's not what humans typically do because we make mistakes. Now, I sometimes beat the computer by using a little bit of my trading experience. I, I get a little pickier than the computer might. Um, but understand that when I show these numbers, these are kind of just baseline statistics, something for you to build on. And, um, you know, whether you take every trade, whether you only take the trades under $10 because you have limited amounts of capital, that obviously has an effect on the results here. But, you know, what we try to see when we do this is we try to build something called an equity curve. And so we take the profit from each day and we accumulate it. And what we want to see is an equity curve that goes up from left to right. So this is the equity curve based on this spreadsheet. Okay, so all I've done is created a chart out of that spreadsheet. And this would be August 1. And this was as of yesterday. I haven't done today yet. So this is yesterday. And you can see that it generally goes up from left to right. Now we had a nice upward trend there. And then in the middle of the summer, it got kind of quiet. We basically went sideways for about a month. That wasn't very much fun. And then it uh, started to rock and roll again, and we were back in our upward trend. So that's how strategy trading is. Um, strategies don't go up like this day after day after day. There is some volatility in that. But what we want is something that goes up steadily from left to right. If you have a strategy that does this, you're not going to make any money because you're going to go absolutely crazy and your drawdowns will be too big. So what we really want is a strategy that has a fairly consistent upward sloping equity curve from left to right. I'll show you one other equity curve in a moment. So the next strategy is um, kind of an interesting strategy. I, I used to do this five, six years ago. It's called the worm strategy. The idea is it's a, uh, a strategy where we enter trades very early in the day, in the first 10 minutes of the trading day, typically. Um, you can actually do it longer, but I, I tend to do it, just do it in the first 10 minutes of the trading day. Um, and, you know, the old saying, the early bird gets the worm. So uh, intellectually, super simple, but mechanically, process wise, it's challenging because you have to work very, very quickly. So this is one where. I think my experience can help my students a lot. In the active live service, I call out these trades as I find them. And so for example, this morning, as I'm doing the work and I'm moving super fast, I, you know, I got a lot of experience using TradeStation and some of the other things that I use. And so I, even, even with all that experience, I still miss some or I'm a few minutes late. Um, I'm not perfect at it, but I do a pretty good job of finding the hot stocks of the day in the first two minutes, four minutes of the trading day. And because I can find them quicker than most people, what happens is we get situations where, you know, a stock is doing this and we're buying it two minutes after the open and the crowd, you know, the thousands of other people that are out there in the market, they come in after us and the stock does this. And it typically does that in the first hour and then it might go up more, but most of the move is actually in the first hour. So by 1030, you usually see most of the move. And in some cases where we get it down here, we might get a 10 or 15 RR move in just an hour. So it's a very lucrative strategy. Again, intellectually not complicated, but from a process standpoint and, um, you, and, and that sort of thing, it is challenging. And it I, I would say it's an advanced strategy for that reason, not because it's hard to understand, but just because you have to work quickly. So you have to have TradeStation and be very good with it, or you subscribe to Active Live and you just let me um, pick them and call out the symbols and, and try to uh, enter the orders as quickly as you can. It's a very time sensitive strategy, usually. So for this particular strategy, we use something called my action candle indicator which is you'll see in a moment. And we apply that to the two minute chart and we look for very specific chart patterns. So going back to Grub, remember I said that I bought Grubhub as a day trade here, but I actually bought it as a worm trade there also. So on this particular one, um, it has the pink dot there. Can everyone see that pink dot? So that pink dot is my action candle indicator. Now there's a couple other pink dots there, but those ones weren't from the right pattern. We look for a very specific pattern and we had that on Grub yesterday, 
and um, again entry price there uh, R1 there and we close the day up here with an RR that was about five point I think it was five point three that means a thousand dollars of risk led to a fifty three hundred dollar profit now to take a thousand dollars worth of risk on this one it was a more capital intensive trade you would probably have to buy I'm gonna guess 1500 shares I'm just doing the math in my head quickly um, I might be a little bit off on that but I don't know a little bit more uh, 30 oh no no less than that actually about 1200 shares so about 1200 shares I, I don't know I'm just quickly doing the math in my head let's say it's a thousand shares so a thousand shares um, would cost you fifty four thousand dollars however when you day trade you get three times leverage that means you only have to put up one third of the capital so you have to put up eighteen thousand dollars of capital to make a profit of fifty three hundred dollars so that's one of the the exercises we'll go into when we do the um, economics uh, webinar I think on November 15th I'll go into that more specifically during that webinar so make sure if you want to learn more about this to register for that webinar it's a free one and um, I'll explain how all that works along in the short of it is a very nice percentage return on your capital you know put up let's call it eighteen thousand dollars because I don't want to take out a calculator and make fifty three hundred dollars on that that's about a 30 28 30 percent profit in just a single day on the capital required to do this trade okay so here's the equity curve just for the month of October and as I said earlier this right now is my most lucrative strategy I'm having a lot of fun with this one right now yeah there are days when you get some stocks that move 15 or 20 RR a single stock and that's why we had such a big move at the start of the month of October because we had a, a two, three or four stocks that made these massive moves I think uh, ECYT was one CLSN you know if you watch the markets you may be familiar with those big movers that happened earlier in October so this is the strategy that finds them before most people find them and we jump on them early the rest of the investing public comes in after us and of course the computers are in there as well and uh, you can see with this particular strategy it is up about 200 RR so far now I want to give you a big caveat if this strategy is up 200 RR you should be happy if you can make 50 to 75 on that and the reason is we humans are imperfect we're not as fast as a computer we still have to enter the orders there's a lot of slippage we're gonna miss some so although you know if I was a computer absolutely 100% perfect I, I could maybe make 200 before slippage with slippage probably 180 the reality of being a human and because this one is so time sensitive is that you're gonna be more in that 50 to 75 if you're really good at this strategy so that's still awesome you know for a single month to have that kind of RR um, is great on, on just one little strategy and October hasn't been a great trading month yet it's starting to pick up now that earnings seasons are rolling out so um, but yeah I've I really enjoyed this one and this is a new strategy like I said I did it a few years ago but with a little bit different rules so I'm modifying the rules I'll have a new write-up and lesson on the stock scores website uh, superheroes is my oldest day trading strategy I've done this for probably 15 or 20 years uh, again we use TradeStation or active life I don't do it a whole lot right now I tend to do more intraday pullbacks and worms but we do monitor for these uh, it's very similar to the intraday pullbacks that just the pattern is a little different uh, time required market hours this one is seeking stocks making message candle breaks from predictive chart patterns uh, for the stocks that are on the day trading watch list I'm not going to give an example of that one because I don't have any from the last week that I can recall uh, overnight holds another old strategy that I'm actually starting to do more these days um, not a lot more yet but it's starting to pick up in action it's a good strategy when you have a bull market it works quite well when there's getting some emotion in the market we can use stock scores for this strategy uh, or trade station it takes about an hour a day we do that work at the end of the day in the final hour and then you need usually you need to be able to check your stocks the next morning for the exit point because we're holding these overnight so you do your research work the hard work in the final hour maybe even the final half an hour and then um, just kind of monitor them the next day because a lot of these stocks will have quick pops in the opening hour the following day so um, an example would be what did I pick yesterday I'm drawing a blank 
Um, I picked a stock yesterday. Oh, PLM on the Venture Exchange, Poly Polymet Mining, or maybe it's on the Toronto. One of the Canadian exchanges. I think it's called Polymet Mining. Uh, would be a stock where you know it closed very nice into the final hour, and then today it made a big pop in the opening hour, and then it actually fizzled out after about an hour and a half of the trading day. So that would be an example of how you trade these. So you kind of do your work in the last hour and the first hour. It uh, is seeking stocks trading abnormal price and volume action. It has a very specific pattern that we want to see on the two-minute chart and on the daily chart. And um, we exit typically the following day. In some cases, you could hold longer. Now, the f I think this is the final day trading strategy I'm gonna, or, or short-term active trading strategy I'm going to talk about. And that is the action break strategy. It is a swing strategy. Uh, we can use stock scores for this. We can use trade station. It's a lot easier to use stock scores. This is one where you don't need trade station. Um, and so that's desirable for a lot of people because trade station comes with a cost. Um, I don't have anything to do with trade station. It's a software program that I use. I've used it forever. And, but if you are not in the United States or you're not able to open an account with a broker in the United States, like we in Canada can't, then, um, you can, you would have to subscribe to trade station. So, um, for this strategy, you can use stock scores. It works fine. Uh, you do your work in the final hour of the day, you have some market scans and uh, look for just a simple pattern. So here's an example of a act, action break uh, from four days ago. It was right here. So that's when I bought it. I also featured it in my trade scores alerts that day. And it had the right pattern. It had the right uh, price action on that day. And this one worked out really well. They don't all work this well, but this one went up over 100% the following day. And so, you know, we don't usually sell them in one day either, but I only held this for one day. I bought it uh, just a little above 60 cents and actually sold it at $1.29. And I sent out an alert to all of my um, subscribers for Trade Scores Alerts, the buy and the sell. And uh, yeah, it was a, a nice winner, 108% in one day. Oh, simple swings. I forgot about the good old simple swings. So this is another one that you can use stock scores or trade station for. You do the work in the first and last hour of the trading day. It looks for stocks making action candles. But in this case, the action candle is on the intraday, either 13 or 30 minute chart. And we look for pattern breaks with this one as well. So we go back to our pink dots. This is an indicator that you can use in trade station if you are one of my students. Um, if you don't want to use TradeStation, then you can subscribe to Active Live. We look for these things every morning, and um, we're looking for these pink dots from Predictive Patterns. So this is ATOS again, and this is just an opportunity to actually buy it sooner because we had our pink dot right there at about fifty-five cents, I think. Now I entered it at the end of the day, at, I think around sixty, sixty-one. I can't remember. And then, as I said, I sold it. Uh, right about there when it broke the upward trend line. The trend went parabolic, and so when it broke that trend, I jumped out of it. I actually didn't sell it because of the trend line, but using my um, reward for risk lines that uh, I teach people. So anyway, one day hold, 134%, because with this particular uh, strategy, you actually got in sooner than the action break strategy, because the action break strategy, we wait until the end of the day, this one will pick them up during the day and try to jump in a little quicker. All right. And uh, that's how it looks on the stock scores chart because you can use stock scores for this as well. So again, on stock scores, you pick it up in there and, um, you know, exit it there, something like that. All right. So I'm going to quickly give you an overview of the stock scores education center, which is where I teach all of these things. Just jump back to the stock scores website going to the trader training area, down to the education center. Now you have to be a, um, a member to see some of this stuff. The getting started area is all free. So you can go in there and watch some of these videos that I've created. If you want to learn the theory, then you learn that in the foundation area. There's uh, written lessons, videos, assignments, and tests for all the different theoretical concepts that you need to understand to be able to apply my approach. All right. And then 
once you have the theory, then you start learning the strategies. So you can see that some of the strategies that I talked about tonight are not on here. That's because I've got some new ones coming. So the action break strategy or the breaker strategy, those ETF strategies, they're not here yet. That's some of the new stuff that's coming soon. And then you have the active trader area where you've got uh, simple swings, intraday pullbacks, uh, waves. We don't do much. I think I might remove that one. Um, it's very capital intensive. It takes a lot of money to do it. And so I find most people don't have an interest in it. Um, and I have some new ones coming. So a bunch of new videos coming. I'm taking the week off next week from trading just so I can do all this stuff. And then I'll be back uh, doing my active live and trading on November 6th. So that's how the... Um, how the education center works. Now, if, just quickly want to show you here. If I wanted to learn the uh, six elements of chart patterns, I would click on this and uh, there's the lesson on inflection points. You can watch a video. It's all done online. It's all compatible with your iPhone or iPad or whatever, Samsung phone, whatever you use. Um, as long as you have an internet connection and a, something that you can watch content on the internet, you can do it that way. All right, so that's how the education center is set up. Um, a little bit about the courses. So if you want to be able to subscribe to my active live service, if you want to use my or learn my active trader strategies, then you have to take the active trader course. So this is focused on day and swing trading. If you don't have an interest in that kind of active trading, then the investor course will teach you my investor strategy. So those strategies for exchange traded funds, for longer term investing, for um, the kind of things you might do in your retirement portfolio, but also, you know, a little bit more aggressive stuff too. You don't have to just do the conservative things with the investor course. It's basically focused on position trading. Now the active trader course includes the investor course and it includes the foundation, which is the um, theory. The investor course includes the foundation course, but does not include the active trader course. So hopefully that makes some sense. If you go into the stock scores website and go to trader training, go to learn how to trade, you can see a breakdown of all the courses and there's a video describing each one and um, what, what is taught in, in that course, who is it right for, what is included, all that stuff is there along with the pricing. So let's get into the pricing now. Um, oh, before I do that, just some of the things that are coming up. So once or twice a year, I throw in some live trading, sort of, they're, they're webinars like this one, but they're based on what's going on in the market at that moment. Um, so that's coming up again, November 18th, which is a Saturday from nine till 12 a.m. Pacific time. I'm going to do an overview, about a three hour overview of the foundation material. It's a great way to overcome procrastination. You know, you log into your computer, after breakfast on Saturday, and we're going to walk through um, all the different theories of what you need to understand before you can learn my uh, strategies. Then, uh, two weeks later, well, almost two weeks later, we are going to start what I call Investor Education Week. So each evening, Monday to Friday that week, and the reason I skip a week is because Thanksgiving for the U.S. is the on the 23rd of November. So we want to have a week when it's normal trading. And so November 27th till December 1st, each evening for about an hour, we are going to do market scans together. So you're all going to watch me go into the market scan tool and pick a market scan, Abnormal Breaks US, and I'm going to walk through it and I'm going to tell you why I like a chart or why I don't like a chart. So I would pull up Cumulus Media and I'd say, okay, we've got abnormal action, breaking through resistance, very abnormal volume. What I don't like is that it failed to close near its high, that the risk reward isn't very good because it had such a big move today, and therefore I would rate this a seven out of a 10. That's the kind of thing that we do five nights that particular week. And by the end of the week, I actually make you before the webinar, I make you do, I don't make you, but I ask you to do the market scans yourself, write down the stocks that you would pick, and then I'll go through it and hopefully you've picked the same ones that I do. Um, I don't expect that of you the first couple of days, but with some practice, you can get there. And it's just a great hands-on way to learn how to read chart patterns. One other live session, um, and that is starting November 6th till December 1st, is what we call Active Live. Active Live is you watching my trading screen during the day. 
So I build the watch list. I tell you what I see for the worm trades. I have my computer alert you to intraday pullbacks because we've actually computerized that one. It's all algo. When I say algo, I mean algorithm. Uh, totally computerized. Um, we do swing trades. We review the trades of the previous day. We um, might answer your questions if you have any. And, and then at the end of the day, I come back in in the last half an hour and we look for swing trades again uh, using that um, action breaks strategy. So I pick stocks that way. That's actually been probably one of the most, more successful things in the last month. Um, we've had some great movers in that uh, with that particular strategy in that final half an hour. So if you in the past subscribe to Active Live, let's say you did it four months ago, it's quite a bit different now. I've added a number of new features to it. And so um, anyone who buys my Active Trader course leading up to like, you know, between now and November 6th, um, we'll get Active Live for free. If you don't want it in November, you can hold off until January because I do this service every month. If you want to learn more about Active Live, again, I don't want to bore you with all the details. So go into Stock Scores Analysis, go to Active Live Trading, and there is a page with a video here that explains how it works. And if you are an Active Trader student, you, you cannot use this service unless you have taken the Active Trader course. But if you have, you can subscribe to this for $195 a month, which is cheaper than TradeStation, and I do all the work for you. Um, and uh, you can do that any month you want. If you buy the course, like I said, leading up to this November 6th, or well, even the middle of November, you're gonna get a free month of that. Everyone, every one of my new students now is getting a free month of Active Live, and um, you can use it anytime you want. All right, so let me just go over the course pricing. If you just wanna do the foundation, which is just theory, 995, I don't really recommend that because it's, it's kind of like reading a book about how to ride a bike, but then never riding a bike. Um, the, the important stuff is in the investor and active trader courses. That is where you learn my rules, my strategies. And these are things that, you know, in some cases I've, I've lost tens of thousands of dollars developing the strategy. I've spent, you know, one strategy I'm going to be adding soon, probably two years developing that strategy. And I, you know, in the early period in developing that, I lost money, you know, practicing it and testing it. Uh, not to mention, you know, the thousands of dollars that I spend on programming, because I'm not a very good programmer. So I hire others to do the programming for me. I got to pay them. Um, and so when I give you my trade station code, my indicators that I give my students and only my students, um, you know, I spend thousands of dollars on those things. It's way more expensive to build this stuff yourself than to buy my courses. My courses are a bargain. Um, if you do the work, if you don't do the work, it's a total waste of money. So you have to do the work. How much work is it? Yeah, I mean, I tell people to get through the foundation material eight or 10 hours. Some people do it in less. Um, learning the strategies, you're not going to learn every strategy. I tell people focus on one or two. Pick your favorite. I can help you pick the one that's right for you and learn one or two and then practice them. And practice, you know, if you're day trading, it might take a couple of months. If you're investing, it could take you less. If you're emotional, it could take you a long time. If you're disciplined, it may take much less time. Okay, so there's no trick to it. It's just you got to work. I, I'm giving you 27 years of experience when I sell you my course and I don't want to sell a lot of courses. That's why they're priced the way they are. And that's also why you probably won't hear or see me advertise in a lot of places because I, I don't want to teach more than a hundred people a year. Uh, now the one other option for training is mentorship. Mentorship is basically the active trader course, but with 16 weeks of lessons. So I have a small group of people that I do, and I haven't totally committed to doing it yet because I've been so busy, but it'll either start in December or January if I do it. And I, again, I'm going to decide in the next week or two. Um, but you'll basically have 16 hourly coaching sessions with you and a few other people. I think there's a limit of 15 people in the mentorship. And it, there's no more information than is what in the Active Trader course, but it's me going through it step by step, very methodically, very slowly, one step at a time. So, you know, it. I, I think for most people, it's just a better way to learn it. And I haven't had anyone, you know, do that who said that was a waste of time. It, it really is into the detail and 
little things that maybe you would have misunderstood if I hadn't coached you through it, it's going to be much more clear. You get a homework assignment once a week. And um, yeah, it's a great option, but it's more expensive. Now, the mentorship includes the active trader course, includes the investor course, includes the foundation. Um, you don't pay this plus this. It's if you buy the mentorship course, you get everything else. OK, if you've done the active trader course in the past and you want to upgrade, you can do that. It's two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to upgrade from active to mentorship. It's basically the price difference plus two hundred fifty dollars. So if you've done the foundation and you want to upgrade, it's what is that? Forty five hundred dollar difference uh, plus the two fifty. So we'll talk about that Um if you have an interest in it, I'll give you the details in an email. Uh, with your course, you get six months access to the tools, and then you can either subscribe to the monthly for $29 a month or annually for $300 a year. And then finally, you've got your trader training and products and services area of stockscores.com where you can get more details. Now I'm gonna quickly put up a poll if you want some follow-up information. Let me just gotta open it up here. So if you want some more information on um, this, uh, these courses, I'll, I'll send you one email or maybe two. I don't like spamming people. I don't do high pressure sales. None of that. If you just want an email with some of the details, you just answer this poll and I'm going to launch it right now and then I'll come back to wrap up. All right, so uh, I'm going to take the poll down and uh, actually I'll give you another 10 seconds to answer. Um, I've got my uh, contact information up on screen in just a second. So there is my contact information, my email address, tylerb at stockscores.com. If you have any questions, follow me on Twitter at stockscores and make sure you use and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I put up lots of free videos on YouTube, just do a search for stockscores.com and you can see that there. All right, uh, I'll just take a moment to answer any questions that you might have, although you can also um, email me your questions. So uh, first question, why would we exit our R2 and not R1? Um, I'd like to give stocks some wiggle room. And so if you have too tight of a stop, you lower the probability of success, but you also increase the overall profitability. And it's a trade-off. So with each strategy, I've done a lot of testing to um, define the um, ideal reward for risk trade-off or, or where the stop should be. So when I'm day trading, I tend to use minus R2. When I'm position trading, I sometimes use R1 or R1.3. So it's different rules with different strategies. Um, Will there be updated indicators available? Yeah, I'm going to have a new trade station package available soon. Not a whole lot different yet, but a couple of new things. Another question, you have two monthly rates, but only one annual rate. Um, yeah, there's the reason there's two rates is the active trader monthly is $49 a month. The investor monthly is $29 a month, but they're actually both $300 a year. In other words, it's a lot cheaper to do the annual. So I, I recommend you do the annual, but if you want to do monthly, you can do monthly. Can the abnormal activity scan work as effectively using a weekly chart uh, versus a daily chart for position trading? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's as effective, but I think it's a good way to do things, um, certainly. I What I would tend to do is use the daily first. If you like the daily, then check it on the weekly to see if you have confirmation on that time frame. I think that's probably a better approach. All right. Well, I've got all my questions answered, so I think I will um, conclude there. And if you have any other questions that I oh, missed, oh, one more question came in. Why are moving averages on the daily or weekly chart not a good stop loss point? Um, I wouldn't say that they're not a good stop loss point. 
I just don't use it. So anything that you test and that you find with testing is effective is worth using. I haven't tested the use of moving averages for an exit strategy, at least not in the last 10 years. I think I probably did it one time, but my exit approach is something that I've tested and I find works well. And so I, um, I use that. I did record tonight's session. So as long as there's no technical problems, I will be emailing you a link in case you missed it. I know I went through some things quickly, so you'll have an opportunity to go through it a little slowly and make sure it's all good. And otherwise, I'll wrap it up there. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining me tonight. And make sure you sign up for some of the other webinars coming up in November. Have a great night. Trade well.